in this video, uh, I'm going to demonstrate some problems on the test 5 review. Uh, the first problem we're going to take a look at is number 4. And in problem number 4, we're asked to find uh, the area of a trapezoid with parallel sides of 3 inches, 10 inches, and an altitude of 35 inches. Well, you can see I've drawn a trapezoid here, and now I'm just going to put these measurements uh, onto that trapezoid. So it says the parallel sides. Well, the parallel sides Parallel sides are sides that never cross. So if I follow these lines up, they're going to cross. So these can't be the parallel sides. In fact, these two right here are my parallel sides. So parallel sides of 3 inches and 10 inches. Well, the smaller side up here, I'll label 3 inches. The larger side, I'll label 10 inches. It also tells me that it has an altitude of 35 inches. Well, altitude is the same thing as height. So the height of this trapezoid is going to be 35 inches. Now that I've got the picture drawn, I'm going to go ahead and write the formula to find the area. Okay, the way I think things are written in a formula sheet, one half height times base uh, and then times the quantity of base plus the other base. So I'm just going to answer this information. Well, one half is going to stay one half. The height or altitude of my trapezoid is 35 inches. Uh, one of my bases is 10 inches. And the other base is 3 inches. So remember the order of operations. We need to do parentheses before the multiplication. So I need to calculate the 10 times or 10 plus 3. Which is going to give me 13. Now I simply just have to go through and multiply the rest of this stuff out. Okay, so calculators are allowed on this, this exam, so I'm just going to punch this in. I have 1 half times 35 times 13. Well, I'm going to put 1 half into my calculator. I'm going to put 0.5. So 0.5 times 35 times 13. It's going to give me 227.5. Now, it's very important that I get the units of measure on here. I was finding area. So area is a two-dimensional measure, so I need to have square units on the end. So I'm going to have inches squared. Okay. Next problem we'll take a look at is uh, problem number five. Here we're asked to find the area of this three-quarters of a circle. Well, to find the area of three-quarters of the circle, the first thing we're going to do is find the area of the whole circle. To find the area of the whole circle, I'm going to use the formula area equals pi times radius squared. In this case, the radius of the circle is given. It's right there. It's 3 yards. So I'm going to have 3.14 times 3 to the second power. Well, I'm going to follow the order of operations again. So I would do exponents first. So 3 to the second power is 9. So I'm going to take 3.14 times 9. Again, calculators are allowed, so I'll take 28.26, so uh, and that's going to be square yards. Now that would be great if I was finding the area of the whole circle, but notice we just have 3 quarters of the circle here. So to find 3 quarters of something, what we want to do is we want to multiply by 3 fourths. So what I need to do is I need to take this 28.26 and multiply it by 3 fourths. So to find three fourths of the circle, I'm just going to take three fourths times 28.26. Okay. Now calculating with three fourths is actually a little difficult. So let's change three fourths into its decimal form. Well. To calculate or to change a fraction into its decimal form, we just take the numerator divided by the denominator, which in this case means I'll take 3 divided by 4. And 3 divided by 4 is actually going to give us 0.75. Some of you may have already been already in. So to find 3 quarters of the circle, I'm going to take 3 quarters times 28.26. Some of you may already be familiar that 3 quarters is actually 0.75 when I change that to a decimal number. If you're not familiar with that, all you need to do is take 
and divide 3 by 4, and that will give you that 0.75. So I'm going to take this 0 0.75, and I'm multiplying that times 28.26. Uh, so I get, as my answer here, I get 21.195, but I think the instructions on our sheet, nope, just to find the area. So that's an exact answer, we don't need to round in this case, so 21.195 uh, square yards, again, because we're finding area. Okay, on the second part of our review, we're actually working with the square roots and the Pythagorean theorem. So actually four turns up, the problem number four turns up again on the review, it's just because we're on the second part now. But in problem four here on the second part, we're asked to evaluate an expression that has square roots in there. So given a problem like this, it's actually an order of operations problem. So we want to follow parentheses, exponents, multiplication and division from left to right, addition and subtraction from left to right. So you may wonder, well, where do square roots fall? Well, they actually fall as an exponent. A square root is an exponent, so we're going to do that second in the order of operations. So notice in this problem I have multiplication, square roots, and addition. So I'm going to do the square roots first. So I need to take the square root of 25 and the square root of 4 as my first step. You may have also wondered what operation is going on between the 3 and the square root of 25. It's multiplication. Most of the time when we write things next to each other in mathematics, it indicates multiplication. So I'm going to be taking 3 times the square root of 25. Well, the square root of 25 is 5. And I'm going to be adding to that the square root of 4. Well, the square root of 4 is 2. So now I have multiplication and addition. I'll do the multiplication next. And then finally, at last, I'll do the addition. 15 plus 2 is going to give me 17. Problem 6, I'm also asked to do an order of operations problem. As discussed before, Square roots are going to come before addition in the order of operations, so I need to take the square root of each of these fractions. Well, the square root of a fraction is going to be a fraction, so I'll write a fraction down here, and I just think what number times itself is going to give me 1? That'll be the numerator of this fraction. What number times itself will give me 100? That's 10. That'll be the denominator of the fraction. And I'll repeat that same idea over here. I'm going to get a fraction. Uh, 3 times 3 will give me 9, so the square root of 9 is 3. The square root of 16 is 4. So I've taken the square roots, now I need to add these fractions together. Well, in order to add fractions, I need a common denominator. Um, in this case, if I'm looking at 10 and 4, my LCD is going to be 20. So I need to build each of these fractions so they have a common denominator of 20. First fraction, I have 10 in the denominator. So I'll have to multiply the top and the bottom by 2, so give me 2 twentieths. Second fraction, starting with 4, getting to 20, I'll have to multiply by 5, which will give me 15 twentieths. Now that I have a common denominator, I can add these fractions together. Okay, I hope this video was helpful.